Should you, as a provider man, pay for your woman's business, small business aspirations, endeavors, whatever? Okay? The question is, I have a wife or a long-term serious girlfriend. She wants to start a business. Should you, as the man, give her money to start the business? That's the premise, okay? So here's what I think. If you're providing for your woman fully, she's going to be sitting at home anyways. She's going to be at home, not doing much, going about her day, getting her nails done, getting her hair done, mimosas, brunch, shopping, whatever. And she comes to you and she goes, hey, I want to start a nail salon. I want to... I want to start a hair salon. I want to put a tattoo parlor. I don't know. Something like this, you see. And then as a man, you got to go, okay. So girlfriend or wife who's never had any business experience at all. You want me to just pay and invest in your business and get it started. So then you say, should you do that or not? Now, my question is this. Wouldn't it just simply be better for you to allow your wife, your long-term girlfriend, to just have something in her life that keeps her busy, you know? It might cost, she, she has a small business that loses 10K a month, but then she's just busy all the time. Because if she's working on something that does, even if it doesn't make any money, so what? Because otherwise she's got all the time in the world, she's wondering where you're at, what you're doing. Hey, we, who are you with? Where's your, where's, share your location. She's at home bored. So should you just, just give her the business. Get, let her start a little hair salon that loses 10K a month. That's going to be cheaper than your woman at home. Just, I don't know what she's doing. She's going to be at Neiman's or some other shit shopping or whatever. You're going to spend 10K a month anyways, fella, or more. At least if she's working on something for a couple of hours a day or something, and the business doesn't do as great, but she likes, you know, she likes her little yoga business she started, a business of one or something, you know? And it costs 10K a month, that is a great babysitter for your girlfriend or wife or whatever. Because otherwise, she's just gonna be wondering where you're at. So maybe you should just give it to her. Because if she doesn't have something to work on, she doesn't have a project, you know, some, a, cute, a cute girl project to keep her busy, then she just might, she just might, just go spend it anyways. <laughs> you know, she's gonna spend that anyways. So of course you should just let her have it. That's just that's just to alleviate stress on you. She doesn't worry where you're at. She's busy. She got she got a business to run. So just give it to her. And if it costs you, and if she loses money for a couple of years, and if, and then you're just paying her monthly just to keep it up, keep it afloat. Fine, good. That is a that is a good deal for both of y'all. Something work on, works on. And here's the other thing. I was raised by a single mother. So she, my mother made a business by herself that lost money in the beginning, but then she became very successful. So if she takes it seriously and she wants to work hard at it and make it something that brings money to the table, great. That sounds great too. Then it's a win-win. But even if it doesn't make money, it's still a win-win for both of you. You see, if she wants to take it seriously and just is nice to have, fine. If she doesn't, well, now she's got something to do all day. That's great. Just give it to her. Let her have it. Do you guys understand? Do you see what I mean? Because otherwise, let me tell you something. You guys, get, you're going to sit around and get bored. It gets boring at home sitting around all day. If your girl is living a soft life, fine. You should provide for your woman. Make sure she has her nails done. She's got a gym membership. Whatever. Take care of all that stuff for sure. But... After that, then what? She's going to be wondering where you're at all the time. So just give her the business. Let her, just pay for the business. Let her do her thing. That's the deal. Okay? So that's my thoughts. If you should, be, if you should pay for a woman's small business, if she asks you, sure. Just give her something to do. That sounds great. Okay, what should I do if my boyfriend has a corn addiction? First of all, corn. I love corn. Try it with butter. <laughs> uh, here's the thing. Well, the thing is about addiction is it can really be, um, you know, a crippling thing, whatever. But maybe, maybe you should work work on, uh, you know, doing some more stuff in the bedroom. Who knows? You know, 
I don't know. Maybe maybe he's doing this stuff because he feels like he's not getting it at home. Hey, maybe start wearing some lingerie around the house, sis. Maybe that's a hint. <laughs> Does he hide it from you? Is he going into the basement and eating corn with butter? <laughs> uh, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to start pleasing your man. You know, something to think about. <laughs> maybe you should replace your the, your pajamas and stop wearing a face mask and and lime, limes up your eyes every day. Start wearing some. Uh, Something a bit more risque to bed. How about that? Think about that. Pay attention. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what if you're intimate daily and they still love corn? Well, there might be. There's there's some things that are just out of reach, sis. Okay. There's some some appetites that cannot be satiated, no matter what you do, and that goes to both ends. You have a you have a woman with a high drive. Oh my God. It's like. All right, <sighs> again. <laughs> uh, that goes on, that's both sides of the fence. It can go both ways. But seriously though, that could be a serious addiction. So do your best first and then maybe it's a, a problem second. Maybe it's a problem you can like lease out to someone else. Tag, tag somebody else in. Like tag, you're in. Come in. <laughs> Is it true that financially stable men will always make you earn their love? Yeah, I've been seeing that a lot, guys. Seeming to want princess treatment, like be treated like a woman almost. I haven't seen that lately. My my version of that is like, uh, I've I've seen a lot of guys that are saying th versions of that. I meant to say, and the way I see it is that if a guy, if a guy is himself looking for princess treatment, it's sort of he's sort of relinquishing responsibility for a relationship or something, and sort of putting it on the woman to kind of like take the initiative, make the plans, do the things, spoil them, buy them stuff, stuff like that. And now I'm not saying that gifts aren't nice, fine. But what I am saying is that men are sort of relinquishing responsibility and it makes them feminine. That's a feminine thing. To not take initiative, to not be the, the driver in the driver's seat, that's, that's sort of a feminine thing. So men are wanting princess treatment, it's called princess treatment because it's feminine treatment. Uh, but men wanting to do that, I think, comes stems from a frustration of feeling that women they want, they have to do everything and women have to do nothing. But I think that not bearing responsibility for yourself as a man is a problem. That's the thing that's causing you. Uh, that's a, that that sort of thing is going to harm you in your life. You got to be able to be a man, go go after what you want, and then you know pursue that thing with with initiative. And uh, that's that's what makes you masculine. De re uh, absolving yourself of that is going to hurt you long term. How do I motivate my man to work more? Now, I don't know that I don't know necessarily that you can, but I think women are really good at like uh, making hints that you need to get off your ass. Because here's the thing: no woman wants to go to work and see their man, leave their man, you know, at the on the couch, play an Xbox, you know, in their boxers or whatever, and then go go to work all day for nine hours, let's say. 10 hours, whatever, come home, and then the man is in the same place, on the same couch, in the same box as where you left him. Nothing drives you up more than seeing that. And I don't think men really understand that, you know? They go, they're like, they're just like, what? You know, what? And I think women get very frustrated by that. And then it becomes, the intimacy sort of stops, the nagging sort of begins, and I think women have a hard time sort of being the aggressor and, and you know, bringing that up directly to them until it's way too late. It's been boiling up for so long and then you finally explode at them and that's when they finally get the picture of what you're trying to say. When there are signs that you were frustrated with them long before that time. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, how do you get them to work? The thing is, is just be more direct. Say, hey, what'd you do today? Oh, I did this. What do you mean you just did this? What are you talking about? You better get a job. You better get some money in here. What do you mean? <laughs> you got to be direct with them. Why do men go for women they cannot afford? <clears throat> Why do men go to women they can't afford? I think men kind of, you know, they just want really pretty women, you know, and oft oftentimes that includes women that are well put together, whatever. And that, those things cost a lot of money, um, but that's what they're attracted to, so they just go for them. Go for them. I don't, I don't, some guys might look at a girl and say, oh, I can't afford her. I'll give an example. There'll be girls on Instagram 
that are doing the most craziest, bougiest shit all around the world with whoever, right? And you see that in real life, and you're going like, hey, hey, hang on. How are you doing all this stuff? And if you're a guy that doesn't have any money, that can be very intimidating to them. And that when men can think that, oh, I don't afford her. And then they'll sort of justify it by saying she's doing some like ho shit or whatever. But I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily know in the real world outside of like social media, people are like, oh my God, I don't think I could afford this girl. I don't really think that's the case. I think that they think sort of money falls out of the sky for pretty girls and they don't really have to pay for stuff. So they just go for them. I don't know if that's a, I don't know if that's a conscious thought for most guys that don't make money. What attracts a successful man? Well, you gotta be attractive and you gotta be an attractive woman. Cause see, I see this all the time. You know, people are so dishonest about it. It's like women like rich men. I've seen some gorgeous women with some straight up ugly men, short, fat, bald, just bad face, bad teeth, bad breath. And none of that shit mattered. It was like, it's all of that is counterbalanced by the money in their wallet. I've witnessed that. Like, so it's like, you have, aesthetically, you're the not so good looking and girls already like medium ugly guys is simply because it's just like, they feel like they have more control over the situation if they're a bit prettier than the man. So women like that shit, they vibe with that better, it makes them feel safer. They don't wanna date a super attractive guy for two reasons. One is oftentimes super attractive guys are just attractive so they're not really smart or capable enough to do anything else in the world. There's not, they, didn't, they weren't motivated to do much else. So they, they, if you date a, you'll know what I mean if you date like a really attractive male model who all he is is just attractive but can, is incapable of doing anything else but make excuses and lie, okay? And girls date that kind of guy for six months and then by, at six months time, doesn't matter how good he looks, you hate that dude, he's the worst. Okay, so super attractive doesn't bode well typically. And then, and then the other side of that is, is that if they're attractive and capable and successful, then oftentimes women are intimidated by that because that they're like, oh shit, this man could just replace me. But if, I'm, if the woman's thinking I'm above this guy, I'm more attractive than he is, that gives them a little bit more power, a little more power in the dynamic. You see what I mean? So that's why girls are liking the medium ugly guys, like a medium rare state. It's okay, but it'll do. <laughs> so medium ugly and money is like a, is like a nice, a good spot where women still feel like they're in control, but he's got money, it was a win-win, all right? Whoosh, that's how it goes. Now, now if you're an ugly, ugly man, just make some more money. Then you could just stand on your wallet, you grow five inches right there, for sure. You grow, you get all your hair back, you get blue eyes, whatever you need, just, it's, just, it's in dollars. You can count, you can stand on that shit. So. Women like, women like guys with money, let's just face it. Let's just be honest. Let's start there, okay? You gotta have money. Doesn't matter if you're attractive, if you're a fucking loser, she will hate your ass in like six months. So you can't be a loser, you gotta make money. And then men like women that are pretty. That's it. So that's the other thing, you gotta be pretty. Doesn't matter how you think of yourself. Doesn't matter what your personality is, whatever. The man has, you gotta be pretty and he has a type and you fit that box, great, perfect. Win-win, okay? So, let's just start there. So if you go, what attracts a successful man? Being pretty. Start there first. Then positioning, like you gotta be around in the general proximity so it's realistic that they can interact with you. And then have a personality where you're not the worst. You're not, you're just not like, Awful. I've met some beautiful girls that then I talk to them and I'm like, oh, I'd rather die than finish this date. So I'm just going to exit myself. Okay? Trust me. Just not, don't be the worst. Be interested. Be pleasant. Be nice to people and, and others. And then that's it. That's all you got to do. Yeah, yeah, they were too dry. Yes, I've met girls that are super pretty, but I have the personality of a wet towel. And it's like, ugh, ugh, what am I supposed to do with you? I wanna hang you up to dry somewhere. Cause I'm done with this. <laughs> God, I don't wanna take two or three dates to get to know you, cause this sucks today. <laughs> this way, let's just start, let's just start here. If I think that men just shouldn't lie. That way, women have a choice, okay? Because I think that if a man was just honest about his intentions up front, then there's no issue. Now women get a choice. So when, if a man was like straight up with you and was like, hey, listen, 
I like you, I want to date you, whatever, but I'm not going to be monogamous. And then they're like, oh, word. I can choose now. I can stay or walk away, no biggie. All right? That's a, that's a solution, at least. Okay? Because let me tell you something. A guy who is broke and at the bottom has all the time in the world. Those are the guys you see on Tinder and shit. All right? They're like, they're like their girl works, the girl pays for the rent and the electricity and the Wi-Fi, and he's at home playing games and swiping on Tinder with every intention of getting a girl back to the house that you're paying for in your bed. <laughs> Those are the worst guys, all right? But then the guys in the middle, not so much. We'll talk about that in a second. And then you got the rich guys who's not busy day to day with something to do because they have you know things going on or money they already have money or something like that so they they have a little bit more free time but they're operating in echelons where the opportunity is going to be there because they're successful if you make money as a guy let me tell you if you make money as a guy women throw themselves at you for real okay so that's going to be happy. that's going to be a part of it you know you want to know what my advice is you want a guy that can't cheat that won't cheat all right here's the here's the advice date Upper middle class dudes, guys with jobs, guys that have, have reputations that matter. Think like C-suite. C-suite at a middle range company, you know, they're, some, they're the CTO or the COO of a partially visible company that it would be embarrassing for them to cheat. And also they work, they get up, they go to work, nine o'clock, they get off at five, and then they're, they're driving the way home. You know you have their location, because that's how y'all live. He don't have time to cheat. By the time he gets home, he's got to pack up lunch for tomorrow and go to bed. That's it. You want a guy that doesn't want a guy to cheat. If, you want a, if you're a woman that wants a man that doesn't te- cheat, date upper middle class. He has money. He's busy as fuck. And he only has time on like Saturdays. And then those are the days y'all can go like hiking and then Home Depot and then be back to work. The end. Who has the time for an affair? Okay? Upper middle class. That's the key, ladies. Just in that range, and that will is the most likely for success for you. <laughs> okay, let's see. Is Shira joining today? Your last live was great. Uh, I don't know. I haven't talked to her in a bit. I was in Miami. I was there for swim week, uh, and I just got back, so I haven't I haven't talked to Shira. Uh, I'm sure I'll, I'm sure I'll see her again soon. I I will reach out to her at some point. Uh, we'll talk probably this week. Um, I'm just kind of getting my bearings on things. Miami was great. My, my, Miami was great. A, a lot of shows. The girls in Miami are absolutely feral, too. It's crazy. Man, it's hot. Maybe that's what it is. Everybody's just hot and excitable and excited on the streets. Girls are coming up to you. What's up? Hey, hello. You from here? What's your Instagram? What's your number? <laughs> it's crazy out there. What do you do when a guy you think is above your league matches with you? Here's the thing. Guys will date. First of all, guys aren't super aware of their league. Okay, that's just the reality. Because uh, cause league for men is so speculative. Again, you can be an attractive guy. Let's say 10 out of 10 attractiveness. Here, let me ask you guys. I'll, let's do a poll right now. How many people have known a man that is a 10 out of 10 attractiveness? Attractive dude. And then you, as you get to know him, you realize that he's a broke fucking loser. And he's going to be a broke loser forever. Because that's just his personality. That's just who he's going to be. Attractive as hell, but then you meet them, and then now he's, oh shit, he went from a 10 to like a 4. How many? Raise your hands. Have you guys met that kind of guy? Have you met him? Okay. So when you, yeah, raise him right now. So a 10 out of 10 does nothing but make excuses and is a broke fucking loser, and is now is like a 3 or a 4, or like a, ugh, that guy, yuck. How many? That's, that happens so much. That happens all the time. So when you stay out of my league, that's pretty subjective, all right? And let me tell you something else, sis. The reality is, is that what people embellish on their social media profiles is so almost all the time fake as fuck. They lie about all the things they got going on. And that, especially the broke ones. Oh my God, if you knew how many. Here, I'll give you an example. Here's my impression of a broke guy on, on Tinder. Oh my God, if you know how many things I was, had going on right now, you would be, it would make your head spin. It's so crazy. I'm, so, I'm just so busy with all the things I got going on. That's every broke guy ever. Just there it is. That's my impression of every broke guy ever. Oh my God, so many things. I got all these different businesses I'm running. Broke as fuck. That's my impression. All right, so firstly, first and foremost, 
Don't just assume he's out of your league because he's probably fucking lying. Number one. Let's start there. All right? <laughs> and if he's mad, and, and, and that will become painfully obvious down the road. Trust me. So and if he's mas- matching with you, though, and otherwise you perceive him as being successful, whatever, down the line. Shows up, he's driving the right car, he's got the right house, he's got the right place, whatever. Okay. Then assess. But if he's, and if he's, you know, he's spending time with you, he's taking you out, he's buying you dinner, have a good time, it's all good. You ain't getting married yet, so have a couple dates lined up this week. That's the best way you can go. That's the best way you can approach it as a woman. And you never know how it's going to go. It can be date one of three on this week. <sighs> Whatever. Don't overthink it because oftentimes it's cap anyways, especially if they're on Tinder. God. Ugh. I'm feeling curious if you have any advice for the dating scene in Beverly Hills. I'm moving there in a month. Well, okay. I live in Beverly Hills. So here's how it goes. You got to just like, a, where are you going to socialize is that in people's houses, like parties, house parties. Going out in LA is whack. It's not like it used to be. Uh, now it's all about private little events. So you got to entrench yourself soon. Uh, just get out here, have some friends, start going out to some events. If you're a girl, you'll whisk, you'll whisk right in there. Do you have any advice for a 24 year old girl dating in Miami, Sierra? I was just in Miami. Miami is wild. The girls in Miami are insanely feral. They are, they are, if you're a successful guy in Miami, girls are all over you with their puppy attitude, you know, at the guys. They come straight up to you and they're like, hey, what's up? They'll, I've seen girls just, excuse me, but part through a crowd to go up to guys that have money. <laughs> <laughs> they just appear at your table. They're there now. So dating is harder in Miami because if you're a guy, the, the kind of guy you want to date are obviously success, successful men, successful men that do things that are interesting. Um, girls would just like appear there and it's just so easy for them. So it's harder. <laughs> uh, it's, and, and like I'm from LA. I'm not from LA. I live in LA and I, I go out on dates. I gotta take a little going days. I'm going. I'm going to dinner anyways. Come with me. Da da da. It's nice. Miami is like dating is like there's a crowd of five dudes and like twelve girls and y'all all go together to a place and then that's how y'all date. And it's, it's just like okay. Next thing you know, you're at live and that rolls into eleven and then the sun comes up. Ugh. God, don't y'all sleep ever? I don't know. I like Miami seasonally though. Um, it's hard though. The answer is it's hard, Sierra. I don't know. Raya? I don't know. Have you met a man in his 20s? Men in their 20s don't know shit about anything. Do you want to date a man that's like, oh, I don't know what I want to do. And I'm not sure. Hopefully, well, we'll see. Like, that's what a man in their 20s, they know nothing. They're not, there's nothing more useless than a man in their 20s. So why, Jessica, would you want to date a man in their 20s? Because if he doesn't know where he's going or anything about himself yet, why would you choose to be with that guy? He's not gonna, he's not gonna be certain about you and uncertain about his whole life direction, okay? So trust me, Jessica, if you're 25, it's you're in your, if you're dating seriously, date men that are closer to being a man, all right? Like 35, even 40. You should be dating sort of in that range because those guys at least know who they are, have something they're working towards, and are building something for themselves with conviction. A guy in the 20s is like, I don't know, well, I hope this works out for, oh, I met this guy, it seems like a good networking opportunity. Eh. That's what 20 year olds are like. Why would you want to date them? How, what makes them think they're gonna be certain about you, let alone anything else? Jessica, trust me, date older. Okay, here's the thing, being stingy, Bianca, is a mindset. I know guys that are very successful, have a lot of money, but they won't spend a red cent. Y'all gonna be penny pinching at every turn. With the food you eat, with the places you stay, with the things you're doing, it's always gonna be like a financial discussion. It's always gonna be saving for the future, the, 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 the apocalypse that never comes. And it's just a mindset. Being stingy like that is like deep in their family. It's deep in their soul and who they are. And that stinginess is gonna transfer to their kids and their kids are gonna grow up little stingy little fuckers too. So unless you like that shit, unless you like to like have a budget and work to it and we're gonna hit our financial goals this month, honey, yeah. Unless you like that attitude, that energy, I suggest you stay far away from them because that shit ain't changing. How do you know when a man is ready to settle down? Okay, so that's a big challenge actually. So 
Here's the thing with men, especially successful men. Loser men will want to set out, settle down right away. If their guy's a loser, he's like, oh yeah, we should move in, just get married. What's your credit score? Yeah, they, they, those, are, those are the loser guys. If they're asking, let me tell you, but loser guys, if they're asking you what your credit score is in the first 30 days of, of knowing them, loser, run. Because that guy will settle down like that. And that will be a big mistake on your part, trust me, okay? So don't, if he's asking about your credit, how much you make, what's your house? If he's, if he's like saying, well, I can just stay here with you in a week or two, run. Because they'll settle down, all right. <laughs> settle right into your life. And you're gonna be you're gonna be paying for it. <laughs> so you know they men will settle down. Just you know, avoid these types. All right, the early ones, the ones that want to know you, how much money you make, what your credit's like. Avoid those guys, okay? Because they're gonna be taking advantage of you. Now, successful men, guys that make money, have money, whatever. Those guys, uh, they settle down on their time timeline, which is oftentimes with zero consideration for the woman or women that they're seeing. You understand? So men will settle down and get married to and have children with the girl that's right in front of them when they're ready to have kids. The end, that's all. And they don't care who you are, how much you make. Men will marry the waitress, okay? It doesn't matter. So for a man, if you're dating a man, who Jessica here dating 20 year olds, okay? She's gonna spend 10 years with a 20 year old that will dump her when he's 35 and ready to have a family. Okay, because he's gonna be 35 and wanna date himself a 22 year old, whatever, all right? So if you're Jessica, who's 25, dating a 22 or 23 year old man, you're gonna date that guy all the way till he's 33-ish. Now, now you're 35, 36 year old Jessica, and now he wants to have a family, but he's gonna, have, he's gonna do it with his little side girlfriend or some girl that's younger than you, and you're incapable of doing it. So guys have no regard for your timeline, and they're simply just gonna be ready when they're ready, and they're gonna marry the woman that's right there when that time comes. So you need to take that seriously because uh, <laughs> if you're dating a guy whose timeline isn't gonna be ready for the near future, you're gonna be uh, a lot older now. You're just gonna be four or five or 10 years older now, and, not, and you're not gonna be the one he marries. So, consider that seriously. That's why it's always a good idea to date older, as a woman. How can I meet someone without going out? You can't, that's the thing. That's the thing, Jessica. You're not Rapunzel. You can't just sit at home, let down your hair, and some man's just gonna show up on his steed and just <laughs> let down your hair, I'm coming up. It's not gonna work like that, all right? You gotta get out of your house. That's the thing, you gotta have a life, you gotta mingle. And I know that's exhausting, I know, believe me. Oh. God, I gotta get full ready, take an everything shower, you know, tweeze your eyebrows, beat your face. <laughs> I get it. However, it's a bad habit to not do those things regularly enough and just get out of your house and start having a life because it can be way more exciting than the comfort of not doing any of those things. I get it, I know. Get those tangles out of your hair and get out there. Put some heels on. <laughs> it's what it takes. It's called marketing. <laughs> Market yourself. What, what, whoop. What about 13 year age gap? Nobody cares about your age gap, guys. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. If you're a 30 year old woman dating a 43 year old man, who cares? Who cares? As long as it's legal and nothing, no, no some weird shit, then it doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Who's gonna talk about it? Aunt June? Who? What does Aunt June know? She's got a, she's got a painkiller addiction, Aunt June. She, who cares what she says? You get what I'm saying? Who cares? Date whoever you want. How do you know? How do you know when you're ready to commit merit to commit marriage? Well, oftentimes women know pretty, pretty right on, pretty soon. They often at a young age know that they want to get married and have a man, or whatever. For men, it's different. Mostly for men, it's about, about financial, being financially ready, like adequately ready. Okay. Uh, and financially speaking, like they feel not only stable, but they're in a bit of a, an area of abundance and they're aging and the likelihood that they're gonna start dating and getting a lot younger women still at this age is um, harder. So they start as, I'd say they start, they, then that varies for everyone, that varies for everyone. Because some guys, they look really young when they're older and whatever, there's all kinds of things that are factored into this. But for men, mostly successful men, broke men will have, wanna have babies with you right away. They wanna lock that shit in, 
as soon as they can. If they're broke and you got good credit and, some, and, a, and a good job, they're going to get you pregnant right away. They're ready now. All right? Be weary of those guys. But the guys that are making money have made money or are making money and are making, trying to make something of themselves. For them, it's a sense of stability, a little excess, and, and the loss of future opportunity with young, beautiful girls. And now's the time. So there, that's, a, that's like a, a nice combination of things, all right? And that varies by person to person. So as a woman, you need to be very discerning about finding a guy that's sort of ready for that in the next three to five, all right? Because if not, he's gonna drag you on through your best fucking years and discard you anyways for the, the cashier at Starbucks. All right, so you gotta be kind of a predictor a little bit and be mean about it too because it's very easy to get your, your feelings involved and then you just become hopeful and next thing you know, you're just now older and nothing to show for it. That's a real reality for many, many women, trust me. So instead of that, just be like, where do you see yourself? You want a family soon? Kind of when is that? All right, ask him. Ask him on the first date. What's up? What are your goals for your life? You want a family? Do you want to be an old dad? You want to be a, a 60 year old dad? Running around chasing little toddlers around? Or what? What's the deal? And you'll get a good sense of it. Ask him straight up. When do you think a woman should start vetting for a man to be ready, ready to settle? Right away. What do you mean? You got, you got a couple of years. Here's, here's the best time, timeline for you. Let's put it this way. You're out of college or out of college age range, like 22, 23, okay? You got like two or three years of girly popping around, corporate girly, until you're just sick of this shit. I'm tired of working. I'm tired of having to go to this job Doing this clack, 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 clack. I don't want any of this shit anymore. I need to start, I need to find me a man that's gonna provide for me now. And then you wanna find that man, date that man for three to five years, somewhere in there, and then get married. And then now you're 30. And then you got a one or two years of not ha of being married without a child, so you can enjoy that phase for a bit. Now you're 31, 32. Now you have kids around that time and that's already kind of pushing it. So the answer is when you, the question is when should you start to look for a man? So fucking now, today, now sis, you don't got, you have less time than you think because otherwise if you just try to rush it and you jump in with into, into, you know, somebody, some man's life that you've only known for six months, you're gonna find. You're gonna come to find out that they, you know, they clap when the airplane lands, or they 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 have weird fetishes around your shoes and stuff that you haven't discovered yet. Because those are the kinds of things that that don't come out until like month seven. All right, y'all got married in six months. Uh oh, you're already committed now, and you catch them in your closet, in your shoe closet, doing weird stuff, and it's month six. I mean, month seven now, and you, you got married at month six. Uh oh, he's he's got he's got a he's got a backdoor proclivity. Uh oh, you didn't know. You know, you don't have that much time to date these guys. All right, so if you rush it, you're not going to discover the things that are going to be ooh, 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 until much later. Okay. So you, the answer is now, sis. Yeah, you have less time than you think. <laughs> oh, good stuff. How, how long do you think you should date someone before moving in? Uh, okay. I've changed my mind about this over the years. All right. You, I've, lived with, I've lived with women that I've dated. <clears throat> and it was fine. Kind of because, you know, two can live for the cost of one. That sort of thing. When I was younger. Uh, economically, it makes sense. Y'all, she's staying over a lot anyways, blah, blah, blah. Especially when you're young. You guys like really want to spend a lot of time together. You want to sleep in the same bed together every night, blah, blah, blah. It's kind of a thing. Uh, but as, now that I've gotten older, like I can't even imagine st sleeping in the same house as a woman. Like I, I think I'd rather her have her own place, you see? And she can stay over a night or two, a week. And she can stay in her comfortable own bed, house. That just seems better for me personally. And I'll pay for it. Just have your own space. 
And I'll, you know, and that way I can see you and it's nice. We're not living each other. You're not getting frustrated at me. I'm not getting frustrated at you. I'm just seeing in like a controlled environment. That sounds better for me now. But that being said, I understand that it's a natural step for folks to just like move in with each other. Y'all living together. Fine. <laughs> Uh, and you should, I think, and I still think you should do that before you get married, especially if you guys are going to move in together when you get married. Um, move in together and kind of test that out because I'm telling you, man, the way they like, things are going to annoy the shit out of you. That might be a deal breaker. And it's small things too. It's like they, the way they don't put the cap back on the toothpaste. You ever, you ever move in with somebody or, li- or, or just see somebody's bathroom and they don't ever put the cap back on the toothpaste? They just... And you just look at that and you're like, what the fuck? What do you mean? Like, what is this catastrophe that I'm looking at? It's just, they're just, it's just like a partially squeezed out drip of toothpaste and then a cap that's just, and they're on two different sides of the sinks. And you're just like, what? What? Isn't that the worst? Stuff like that, you know? And you just see that and you're just like, I would rather die than walk into my bathroom because of this bullshit. Stuff like that, you know? So y'all gotta figure that out before you tie the knot because I'm telling you, stuff like that drives people like me or anybody just bananas. (laughs) How hard was that? (laughs) I don't know, I don't know. So now I just prefer you have your own apartment or something. Let me just live in mine in peace. Here's the thing, Provide, being a provider, man, is a mindset. You gotta, you, because I know men that have money, but they're not provider men at all. So there's a difference. You, gotta, you have to have a willingness to provide for your woman. Now, for me, it's better for me to have a woman who's soft and not stressed out. I just like that better. It's better for me to have a woman that is available. And I'm not, and I'm not unreasonable. And available, here's what I mean by available. I, when I go on trips or vacations or whatever, it's like, hurry up and it's now. It's like, it's not, I didn't plan this six months in advance. I didn't plan this a, a week in advance. It's tomorrow. We're going the next day. That's how it is for me. That's how it's always been for me. My life's happening kind of fast. So I want to say, I'll, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to Vegas for the weekend. I decided an hour ago. Let's go. And then if you're a person that has, has a job or something, that might not be an option for you. You see, so I think that what, what that requires of me is that if I want to see this person that I need to be able to compensate for the fact that I need them to not, I need them to be available. And if they're going to have a job that would otherwise compromise that availability, it's my responsibility to cover that cost. You see, it's in my interest for them not to have something that's not flexible. So oftentimes that means not a rigid job. So if I'm going to date somebody, it's better for me to just take care of them so that they're available on the time when I'm available, when I need them to be available. Does that make sense? That's just a mindset though. Not everybody thinks that way. It's just, it makes more sense for them to be like, I say, hey, you wanna hang out? And they're like, yes, I'm available, I'm free right now. Great, because that's what I was thinking. You see what I'm saying? But if they have a job that's like, oh, I can't tonight, and a thing, and then a thing in the morning, and then at 6 p.m., and then I have to go to this work thing. Who has time for, I don't have time for that. So it's just better for me to have to just have a person that's available, but it's also unrealistic that a, a person is just going to be available all the all the time, no matter what, right? So if they're, how is that a possibility then? Well, I should just provide for them because then that way they are available. They're not going to have a work commitment. Do you see? That's just better for me, and I, and I think that that's the case for a lot of men that take care of their wives at home. They want they want trad wives or whatever at home. And a way to do that is to be like, okay, you're my wife. I'm going to provide for you so that you're doing the things for me as my wife. And that's how it goes. So you need to you need to find guys that are that have that mindset. And and the unfortunate thing is is you're not going to know until you date them a bit. Okay, but you will find out in a date or two. <laughs> Date two or three, you're gonna know if they're the stingy kind of guy that expects you to contribute to the household or not. Trust me. So you gotta get out there, you gotta date a bit. Is three months for a man enough to d- time to decide for marriage? <laughs> if a man is asking you to get married in three months, either he needs a green card, he needs good credit, he needs your income or something, all right? I'd be very worried about a man who's like, I'm ready to get married in three months. By the way, can you co-sign this 
this car, this car note for me. I need a, I need a signature on this apartment. <laughs> If a man's asking you for three months, there is an ulterior, an ulterior motive, sis. Successful men have a lot to lose. They don't get married in three months. It's unsuccessful men that need something from you are asking to get married in three months. All right? Proceed with caution. Do you like to argue? No. That's the worst thing. That's the last thing. That I want. I don't want to. I'm, as a man, you're out there. You're doing stuff. You're dealing with all things that are always hard. Making money is hard. It's always, it's always difficult. It's frustrating parts to it. You're doing that all day. The last thing I want is to come home and argue with someone. I don't want that. What are we arguing about at home? I don't need that. I don't, want, I don't like to argue at all. The answer is no. Shira. Shira. Shira 7. Sprinkle, sprinkle, lady. Shira 7. Why do Dusty's fear women taking their little bit of money we can't do anything with? Yeah, so that was my question. So that Shira's asking, why are men so worried about gold diggers when they don't have any gold to dig? <laughs> why did Dust Shira asks, why did Dusty's worry about taking what little money they have? That's a great question, Shira. I think and you know what I think is? I think that men that don't have money today imagine that one day they will have a lot of money when they when they decide that they're going to get up and start working hard and start making money they envision themselves in their future being rich and famous or successful whatever and they're they're warning them they're they're trying to protect themselves and they're not really they're just mad at women in general but they're trying to protect themselves <laughs> from their woman taking their future potential. And then to my, my question is, what, take half of what? What house? What money? The money you're gonna have? The house you're gonna maybe have one day? Let's just cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> so my, my a better question is, why, why not just have, why not as a woman just simply date men that are success, successful today? And not the ones that imagine that they will be in the future. That's just better. And let them ask them question, those kinds of questions amongst their peers <laughs> instead. How about that? Yeah, half of their change. Half, half of 50 cents is a quarter. Nobody wants that. <laughs> where do we find them? Sprinkle, sprinkle one. Wait, where do you find them? You got to get out there. You got to find, you got to put yourselves in the places where people that have money hang out. Country club, think country clubs. <laughs> Do successful men like successful women? women? Men don't care if you're successful. Men will dare, marry the waitress guys. They don't care. You, you got to be if they're if you're pretty, nice personality. That men will men will leave their wife for the woman that was nice to them at the Applebee's. For real, they don't care if you're successful. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that at all. If, if men are concerned that you're, if, whether or not you're successful, those men are broke. Even if they pretend they're not, those men are broke. If they want you to be successful as a woman, those men are broke. If they're asking about your credit, they broke. If they want you to co-sign on the apartment or your car, broke. If they're worried about how much money you make at your job, they're broke, men. And I contend that you should run from those guys because... That is gonna be that's gonna be a, a bumpy road, that whole relationship. It's gonna be a path riddled in questioning yourself, why are you with this guy and trying to help him get on his feet, and that process is endless. Trust me. So self-made is better. I wouldn't say that. Self-made comes with its own issues too. There's a reason there's some there's a reason why guys make something of themselves. There's some deep seated Feelings of inadequacy, rejection, you know, who knows, you know, who knows what it is. But there's a reason that a guy goes from zero to something. And it's that there's something that propels him to do that because it's hard. So, uh, you know, I'm not saying it's necessarily better from a character perspective. Um, pick your poison, sis. That's the answer. How was Miami Swim Week? Miami Swim Week was dope. It's exciting. There's always stuff to do every night. The thing is about Miami, it's everything's so late. It's so far to the right. I don't, you know, you got to get used to that. It's a, I don't know how people do it, man. 
So was, you're out to five in the morning every day, which is crazy. I don't know. It was okay. I like Miami. It's humid. I like, uh, you know, everybody's in bathing suits and stuff. That's cool. It's fine. It's fine. I could live there when it's cooler, maybe. I might have to. Okay, listen, guys. It's been over an hour. I got to go. I got a date tonight. So anyways, I'll uh, see you guys Thursday. I'll be back Thursday on, I'm not sure what time, afternoon around this time. Okay? Thanks, everybody, for joining me on all three platforms. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.